know, welcome back. In the previous tutorial, we took a look at arrays and some very, very basic functionality of arrays. Um, in this lesson, we're going to talk about a specific array, and that is an, um, a set of arrays that are, are pre-built into PHP um, in layman's terms, and they're ways to get and retrieve data from the browser. Um, and the one we're going to look at today is the get array. Um, many times you might see web pages um, where when you click on something you see a, just a bunch of gibberish up in the URL. Nine times out of ten what that is is it's the page is sending variables to the URL in order to be retrieved when the page reloads or when the next page loads and the way you retrieve those is to access them from the get variable or get array and let's just see an example really quick here if we come over to our browser here and we go to Google and we just type in something if we look up here at our URL you will see tons of gibberish up here but if you look at it closely you'll see that it's defining variables saying s client equals this here which equals this here which equals this here and and, and so on and so on and this is done in a different uh, format than we're gonna do in PHP but it's just an example of what this stuff means up here and it's gonna make more sense when we get into the lesson here so let's go back to Dreamweaver, and we're going to go ahead and make some HTML really quick. And we're just going to make a paragraph tag, and we're going to type in, hello, my name is, and we're going to slap some uh, PHP in there really quick. We're going to echo a variable, which we're going to define in a minute here. And close our PHP. This is again just going to spit out um, hello, my name is, and toss in the value of my name, which there is no value right now, so this would be blank if we tried to load the page. So let's go ahead and make some more PH another PHP block. All right, let's go ahead and define my name. In accordance with the last two lessons, you would think this is how we're going to do this. But like I said in the first tutorial um, or lesson, that this, you know, you might think that defining these variables here is kind of pointless and redundant when we can just slap in my name right here in plain text within the paragraph tags. And that's true. Um, if this were all my page was going to be, I would not go through the trouble of adding PHP. However, one great function or concept of PHP, and that is to be the ability to change the page dynamically. What we're going to do is we're going to pull a variable or a value from the URL. And I mentioned earlier that the array we're going to talk about today is the get array. And the syntax for the get array is the dollar sign underscore get in all caps and then a, an area for the key. This is also going to introduce um, a different type of key and that is a string key or a, a an associative key which we're going to use a word rather than a number to define the, the key. And what we're going to call our key is just simply name. And um, since this is a string we're going to want to put quotes in here whereas in the previous tutorial we were just using numerals so or integers and we did not need to put the uh, quotes that we would when using strings so we're just going to type in the word name and this right here would represent the um, name key however this here doesn't do us anything any good what we actually need to do is come before here or we're going to take this here. This here doesn't do us any good. This is just me explaining to you the syntax. So let's get rid of this. And we're also going to get rid of the value for my name. 
and in turn we're going to put in what we just typed out and that is the get name so now what it's going to do is when the page loads it's going to look to the URL to find the value for name and then it's going to spit it out here where hello my name is so let's save and upload and when we upload we'll see this and the reason is we never gave a value we have not put a value in the the URL so what we need to talk about now is how do we in PHP send values to the URL and what we can do is simply in the URL we're gonna put a question mark which is gonna tell the page that everything after this question mark is going to be we're gonna be assigning values to things so let's go ahead and we're gonna type in name equals Alan and when we go ahead and reload the page there you have it it's gonna output Alan and so now anytime we change this it's gonna change what is outputted in that spot so hopefully you're starting to see some of the benefits of um, variables and and just PMP, PHP in general um, although this is still very um, novice and you might not see a use for this you know why why would I do this uh, how are my you know um, viewers gonna know to type in these values and that's a that's a good good thought to have so let's go ahead and address that so what we're gonna do is I'm going to show you a way that you can use the page to give the user to automatically update what is displayed on the page so let's go ahead and we're going to change this text here to something that's probably pretty familiar to you if you've ever signed up for a website or something and we're going to change this to welcome back and what we're going to do up here is we're going to put some links here and we'll first we'll put them in paragraph tags and let's go ahead and make our link so a href and we're gonna leave that blank for a moment here what we're gonna do for the text link a text of the link is we're just gonna say my name Alan and we're gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll put a vertical bar here and paste again and we're gonna type in Brandon and for those of you who don't know Brandon is one of the other authors for the digital craft which is why I keep using his name what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the user an option to choose who they are so what we need to do for the URL is we can type in the page name which in this case is lesson underscore zero zero three dot PHP and then assign the value so we can we need to do our question mark name equals Alan and we need to do the same over here and our question mark name equals Brandon let's go ahead and save and upload and refresh the page actually get our name out of there and then reload the page All right. so like the last time we pulled it up the area here is empty so let's go ahead if we click on our link here it's gonna reload the page toss the name value up there and spit it out here so if we click on Brandon now it's gonna change it to Brandon and now hopefully you can definitely start seeing some of the benefits here what I want to address next is this issue here where we have the welcome back and there's nothing um, there's a couple different things we could do the first thing would be let's go ahead and 
not make this end line anymore. And the only reason I'm doing that is because we're going to add some more PHP in here and it would look silly in line and harder to read. And I'm going to introduce uh, something else from PHP that I'm just going to run through very quick and we're going to get into it a little bit later in the next tutorial. And that is an if statement. And, and an if statement is, co is considered a conditional. Um, it looks kind of like a function and I guess uh, technically it is a function um, so let me show you how to do it and like I said I'll get into the details of this this a little bit later but you're gonna at least see what the functionality of it is really quick so we're gonna say if and then in parentheses we're gonna give the condition so if get name and what what we're gonna accomplish here is we're gonna say if the key from the get array is empty or null um, and null is a term you can you can go ahead and look up if you don't know what the term null means then do something and the way to do this you would think would be if get name equals null um, however, PHP is going to read this equal sign as if we are defining um, the value of the get name. And that's not true. Since this is a conditional, we're going to do a double. And if, and this might seem strange, the way I look at it and remember it is the first equal sign represents is. So if get name is equal to null. Um, I'm sure there's a more official way to define that, but uh, as I may have mentioned before, I'm self-taught, so give me some leeway. Uh, the next thing to do is we're going to make some curly brackets, and what we're doing here is if this is null, then it's going to do whatever is in between these two curly brackets. However, if it isn't null, it's going to completely ignore this entire block here and continue on. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to put or redefine my name is equal to Alan. And without getting too detailed of the if statement here um, basically what's gonna do is it's going to load the page and it's gonna check to see if we've given a value to the name and the URL and if we haven't or it is null it's gonna go ahead and give it my name we'll think of that as kinda of the default and then echo my name however if we click on one of these links here and there is a value to name this is going to be false and it's going to completely ignore this here and move on and give the correct name and let's go ahead and save and upload and let's reload the page and there you have it it's automatically putting my name in there but it knows that if I click on Brandon it will override that uh, or that that if statement is going to be false and it will skip the uh, variable change. So there you go. And in the next lesson we're going to dive in a little deeper with the, the conditionals.